Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to the uh, Honourable Companies Business Group Budget Forum. This morning, uh, I'm joined by uh, Ruth Dootley, who is a partner at uh, Hazelwoods, Patrick Brook, Brook, who is a strategic consultant, and I'm sure you'll be aware that he's past warden, uh, Peter Randall, who is, a, who is a founder and CEO of uh, EcoVision, and Henry Robinson, who is a farmer and rural champion. What I'd like to do is start uh, the proceedings by just asking Ruth to give a brief uh, budget uh, summary and a few comments. Then I'll ask each of us to come in in turn uh, to uh, make a comment or ask questions. So first of all, over to you, Ruth. Good morning. Well, overall, I think it was a very clever budget. I think the uh, promises were kept that the government have made on not uh, raising taxes that they said they wouldn't rise. They gave help to the uh, struggling businesses and struggling individuals by continuing the, uh, the various grants and uh, um, business aid for the effect of coronavirus. And at the same time, both gave a huge boost potentially to businesses in terms of the super deduction, but also started the process of starting to get back some of the huge expenditure that's had to be put in place for covering the virus. 325 billion pounds is what the government has spent. And that is an absolute massive figure, completely unprecedented since the Second World War and something's got to be done about it. It's very interesting, there's this, corporation tax experiment that's been going on. Um, for a long time, we've been in this process of having very low rates with two purposes. The first is to get businesses to invest in capital expenditure in themselves to generate jobs and growth. And the second is to attract uh, inward investments from overseas by having a much lower rate than our competitors. Now that experiment's being turned off. In uh, two years time, the rate goes up from 19% to 25%, which is a great big jump. For, uh, for larger businesses. For smaller businesses, it's going to be kept at 19% and then on sort of sliding scale up to profits of 250,000. Now, that's a very interesting um, switch because the low corporation tax rates were not actually having the effect of business investments. Even pre-COVID, business investments were not at the level that government wanted. So that experiment wasn't really working. So in comes the super deduction, unprecedented, the Chancellor called it. And I think it is. I can't ever remember a deduction like this, apart from R&D tax credits, where you get back more than you spend. There's never been a deduction where you get back more than you spend. And now businesses that invest in capex expenditure are not only going to get back the whole amount they spend in the first year, but an extra bonus of 30% of that expenditure on top. So that's actually quite a big incentive to go out and spend. It's only there for two years. And the government numbers suggest that it's going to cost the government 12 billion in each of those two years. So we've got a process of give to businesses. And then in two years time, the uh, pendulum swings the other way and the uh, corporation tax rates go up and the, uh, the take in terms of recouping the finances starts. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ruth. Uh, I think uh, actually Hazelwoods could probably pat themselves on the back a little. Uh, because um, I seem to recall uh, reading uh, their predictions for what would occur in the budget. And I think to a very large extent, uh, you've got it right. So I can <laughs> see you've got a very big smiley face there, particularly uh, with regard to corporation tax going up. Um, my question to you is, is um, a, a kind of a general one, a general one in a way, and that is as the... Um, OBR have uh, predicted uh, an earlier exit uh, from the COVID pandemic uh, recession than was previously thought. I think we're going to come out somewhere in the region of 2022, mid 2022. Uh, do you think this, this current budget, uh, particularly the um, uh, incentives that they've given to business will impact that uh, prediction positively or negatively, or will it have very little impact at all? I think the chance has been cautious this time. Yeah. We go back to, uh, to last summer, 
there was the incentive to go out and eat and uh, uh, spend money in restaurants. And uh, it sort of backfired a bit. Obviously, he couldn't have predicted the second wave. Um, and therefore, I think this time there's a degree of caution. So although there's optimistic uh, signs from the OBR numbers and from other sources, I think there's an element of we've got to carry on supporting businesses, supporting individuals. And that's why furlough has been extended, uh, the self-employed scheme, VAT uh, reductions, the stamp duty holiday, the list goes on and on, the extension of the extra um, 10 pounds on the, on the um, 20 pounds, sorry, I think on the, um, on the universal credit. Um, there's a whole raft of continuing measures to support businesses, which in the next tax year or through to, um, to, to next April is actually going to cost about 60 billion pounds. So there's a huge amount of money still going out and uh, the recouping doesn't start for another couple of years. You know, there's no switching, uh, switching the pendulum until two years time. So I think it's being cautious this time um, on the basis that let's continue to support the economy whilst things are tough um, and expect that to bounce back not to be quite as rapid as some people are saying. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Uh, uh, Patrick, would you uh, like to uh, make a comment or ask uh, yeah. Ruth a question and put her on the spot? I would <laughs> never do that, Ruth. Thank you, Michael. Um, the Honourable Company is, of course, well known for its interest in developing young people. And Gloucestershire itself got a national reputation for its um, leadership on apprenticeships. And I noted in the budget the uh, incentive to businesses um, being £3,000 per apprentice uh, for the six month period, I think, to the end of September. I'm always wary about these um, cash incentives distorting the market. And frankly, £3,000 won't go terribly far if an employer really takes on an apprentice with the right intentions to train them through, because apprentices can be quite expensive for companies. What's, what's your quick view on whether these sort of incentives work or not? Yeah, I just am um, referring to the uh, Hazelwood's uh, untangling tax, a uh, bu uh, budget booklet, which we uh, all worked on yesterday and got out overnight. Um, because the apprentice part is in there and I was just looking to see what the previous rates were because I know it went to thirty, uh, so £3,000 per new hire for um, all uh, um, employees regardless of their age. Previously it was £2,000 for a 16 to 24 year old and £1,500 for a 25 year old upwards. Um, and it was set to end on the 31st of March 2021. It's a really interesting question. It's always an interesting question about uh, if you give grants, are you, uh, are you creating a false uh, uh, scenario in terms of is that something the business would have done anyway and therefore you're putting government money where private expenditure would have occurred in any event. It's always a difficult one, that one. I do think with apprenticeship hire and the fact that the uh, COVID um, pandemic has hit and is hitting the younger generation so hard, disproportionately, that a little bit of help is needed. And I don't see, you know, a little bit of uh, incentive to make that decision. And for some small businesses, £3,000 is quite a lot of money. So, you know, it could tip the balance in, in terms of whether they decide to make the hire or not. And that's the whole idea. It's just to give that little extra push. It's not going to give a long term sort of um, uh, a solution. And it, 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 but it's just to kind of give that little bit of extra push. Um, to be honest, I don't see any harm in that. Um, thank you, Ruth. Uh, Henry, could I ask you to um, make a comment or ask Ruth a question? Henry, you're, you're muted. Yes, you missed the swear word, as I suddenly noticed. Um, <laughs> um, Ruth, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I've got two barrels to cover you. First of all, first of all um, the great cry about this budget has been, um, we've got to pay the money back. And I think my first question is, why have we got to do that? I think from a rough memory, so far we've done, is it 290, 280 billion pounds of quantitative easing, which basically is putting money into the economy. And so if we're trying to do much the same again, why don't we just quantitative ease it? So that's my first question. My second question, is about capital gains tax, which was widely predicted to go up. And as far as I could see, there was nothing on capital gains tax. And I'm sure Hazelwoods were clever enough to predict that. And if you did predict that, can I have your tips for Cheltenham next week? 
Well, first question uh, about the borrowing. Um, well, 325 billion spent on the uh, pandemic. It, it's a huge number, um, but you're right um, in that, you know, that um, is a long-term debt that's going to sit there. It's going to take, he said at the beginning of his budget, it's going to take uh, generations, government after government, to, to get the balance back in, in, in order again. And we will have borrowing for a long time. The danger, of course, is that uh, with the interest rate rising, um, that borrowing becomes unaffordable. And that's the real issue that's being tackled here with trying to get some, uh, some money in the coffers. It's for the day that, uh, that will come when interest rates go up. And the statistic in the, in the budget speech yesterday was that for 1% rise in interest rates, there's an annual cost of 25 billion pounds. You know, that's big money. That is something you've got to have a little bit of a war chest for. But in terms of the budget itself, it's quite interesting because um, the, the mantra is always to have a balanced budget. And I think if you, if you ignore the bigger picture of what's going on in terms of the huge national debt and the idea that, you know, incentivizing businesses, public sector ex expenditure, huge boost to the economy, trying to get growth going to, to compensate, that's the big picture. In terms of the budget itself, I went to see whether it was balanced. And you get a book, you get a table in the red book. And the table in the red book is the uh, financial effect of all the policy decisions announced in that budget. So ignore everything else that's going on. The budget itself, is it balanced? But if you take out the year 2021 and just look at uh, the following five years, so from, the, from 21 to 22 through to 25, 26, for the first two years, there's an outgoing so cost to the government of about 66 billion pounds. But in the three years after that, the money coming back in again, nets off at uh, 67 billion pounds. So if you look at it over time, it's a balanced budget, but those numbers, you know, 67 are, are quite small compared to that 325 billion expenditure. So there's two things going on here. There's the sort of the budget, which is, is not, it has an impact, but it's more about driving behavior rather than the numbers themselves. So what he's trying to do is get businesses to invest so that there's a huge amount of, uh, of growth in the economy, that jobs are created. It's not about the numbers in themselves. And those, those you can say, are balanced. <laughs> Thanks. Just pick up the capital gains tax. Oh, right. sorry. Um, <laughs> on capital gains tax, you're right. The only thing that happened on capital gains tax is that it was frozen as long as all the other rates. Um, the only rates that went up slightly, and that's, that's only been the next tax year, um, were the personal allowance and the top of the uh, basic rate band. Otherwise, every single other rate you can think of has been frozen on inheritance tax, on capital gains tax. And, you know, the rumours um, of putting up the um, CGT rate to um, income tax rates, that was something that was put forward by the... Um, um, uh, um, the Commission for um, Simplifying Taxes. And uh, the, rev the government has ignored a lot of their recommendations over the years. Um, so it wasn't a big surprise that it wasn't there. On the other hand, it might come. You know, it could be that it will be in the next budget. Who knows? What it has done is driven a lot of behaviour pre-March uh, pre the 3rd, in that yeah. uh, various of our clients who wanted to sell have got on with it and done it quickly. Um, so in some ways it stimulated a bit of activity in the economy um, um, across the piece. <laughs> I know, and the, the Office of Tax Simplification is the best example of an oxymoron I can think of. <laughs> well, I did say partway through the budget speech to my colleague, I said, we're going back to our old complicated days with, uh, with the marginal rate on uh, tax between the low company rate and the high company rate, and the marginal rate in between is 26.5%. So you're going to be having behavioural, um, uh, you yeah. know, we're going to be tax planning to reduce the profits down to the 50,000 level, because who wants to pay tax at 26.5%, you know? So it's back to the good old days of, I'm sure Patrick remembers them, of, uh, of tax planning to get the profits exactly where you want them to be between the small company's rate and the, and the large company rate, and trying to get out of that uh, in-between bit where the, uh, there's a penal rate. <laughs> Keep it complicated. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, thank you, Henry. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, Peter, can I hand the matter over to you? Michael, thank you very much. Um, Ruth, hi. So I, I actually thought it was a, a very good budget for those of us who run small and medium-sized businesses um, from a general perspective, but bringing it sort of down to earth in terms of what we do, um, I was very disappointed over the, certainly very disappointed over the last month with the government with regards to the Green Homes Grant Scheme. 
which was a scheme that was put in place, uh, announced in July of last year. In September, it was meant to be launched and it's been administered via complete Horlicks from the government and by the company they put in charge of it, a company called ICF. Um, and they announced that they would uh, extend it for a further 12 months um, from the end of March till March 2021. And I guess the disappointment for us was, first of all, that they withdrew the funding for this year, which is one and a half billion. And they're withdrawing that at the end of March. Uh, and then the second point was there's 320 million left for next year. And there was no mention of that in the budget. I wondered if you'd seen any mention of the Green Homes Grant Scheme in the budget, um, particularly bearing in mind COP, which is taking place in Glasgow later this year. And that was part of the 10 point plan in order that we became greener. Uh, and I have to say, I think a government that seems to be pushing hard on the green agenda when it came to the budget, I'm not sure they did. Did you see anything that I missed in the budget in terms of green things? I am. Um... Don't think there was much in terms of green things in the budget. There was an announcement in the speech about, uh, which I didn't follow up on, haven't looked up, about a green bank in Leeds, I think it was. Um, yes. um, but otherwise, it was very light, I think, on, on, on content to encourage the uh, improvement to the environment. It really, really didn't seem to have much in there at all. Um, having said that, you know, it's a huge amount of uh, documentation that um, comes out with the budget. Uh, this morning, I've just um, run off the uh, the levelling up um, proposal document, which um, will have an impact locally in that um, it's the next round of funding uh, to be bid for for infrastructure projects for the county. Um, um, so I've looked at that, but I haven't looked at the uh, what's on the green uh, side of things as yet. Um, so you're probably ahead of me on that one, Peter. Well, I'm not actually. Well, I hope there is something, but we'll see. I didn't see anything in the, um, in the um, there's a whole lot of documents that come out in the Treasury website below the Red Book. Um, there was a consultation on uh, EMI schemes, there was a consultation on uh, research and development expenditure, and I don't remember seeing anything on the green agenda in those uh, documents. Thank you for that. I mean, I can only remember the, um, and you've already mentioned it, the green uh, 12 billion pounds going to a green uh, bank in Leeds. Um, there's a carbon credit market that they're opening up uh, and also wind farms in Teesside and Humberside. I think those were the sort of key greeny bits that um, I um, saw, uh, but I didn't see anything really that would specifically uh, it, uh, impact uh, Gloucestershire, to be honest. No, and I think the reason we were excited earlier was that 40% of all of the carbon emissions actually come from people's homes. Uh, and the Green Home Grant Scheme is actually geared to reduce that. Yeah. It's a great idea. It's been administered badly, and they seem now to be thinking they're going to withdraw it, which is obviously a disappointment for those of us who sit in that industry. Uh, having said that, the other things I'm sure will help us and will push us in a slightly different direction. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, can I thank everybody for their, uh, their contribution? I uh, have one eye on the time uh, and feel that we should sort of call it... Uh, to a close now. Uh, I'm just hoping that um, the amount of uh, pent up demand that we've got uh, in the country for all those things that we've missed uh, during COVID will release uh, the economy so that it, uh, it goes into uh, an enormous boom, which would be very, very good for all of us. Uh, Ruth, can I thank you very much indeed for the work right. that you've done in your presentation this morning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely uh, amazing. So thank you very much. Uh, also, Henry, Patrick and Peter, thank you very much for joining the call. Uh, and I think with that, we'll close the debate.